You will own nothing and be happy, or so the claim goes uh, from a rather prolific video from several years ago. And one of the things that I absolutely want to talk about this evening is how this idea is infiltrating all levels of the culture. Now, The Guardian seems to have come out and let one of their article writers, one of their contributors, well, come up with a rather spicy title to their article, which was changed very quickly, within a day or so. <clears throat> and ladies and gentlemen, now, if you own books, you are smug, you are a part of a cult, and you are middle class. That seems to be the claim here. Now, for those of you who are saying, well, did you read the article? Yes. Twice, in fact. Once on the Wayback Machine, because it has the archive of the original title of the article, and then once in the, <clears throat> excuse me, on the Guardian website. And let's go over here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Wayback Machine. Reading is precious, but the cult of book ownership can be smug and middle class. Rhiannon Lucy Coslett. And then over here, reading is precious. Precious, which is why I've been giving away my books. Now, one of the things, you scroll way down here to the bottom on the Guardian homepage. Oh, right here, okay? The headline on this article was amended on the 24th of January, 2023, to place greater emphasis on the column's central argument. And that is not accurate, so through the article, <clears throat> Miss Rhiannon and Lucy, or Miss, Mrs., maybe I should probably say Mrs., I do apologize, Mrs. Rhiannon and Lucy Coslett, uh, because she does mention here that she does have a husband, goes through and decides to detail out and list um, the many issues that she has with book ownership. One of the things that she talks about at great length in this article is the fact that it seems that book owners, right? Let's go back over here. Book owners are all smug and talk about how they have so many books and it makes them smarter and they essentially use books uh, in their homes and the collection of books as a status symbol and those people are pretty much pretentious, arrogant a-holes. I actually agree with her point here. <clears throat> I think she is 100 correct, 100 correct here. The weird part is, is where she starts to tie in what makes this bad. And it's not the people acting like a-holes that it's bad. It's actually the ownership of books itself that she ties in. Throughout the article, she goes through and talks about how her family had books when she was young, and it was a privileged thing, and this, that, and the other thing, and constantly weaves the narrative of privilege and ownership into the idea that creates the pompous arrogance that she was talking about. Now, we used to call this, you know, just people being arrogant a-holes and not to act like them and put your own attitude in check, but she seems to believe that the idea of ownership in and of itself is the root of the demons. <clears throat> Going through this article was interesting to see the dichotomy here. One, she wanted to, you know, live a life that wasn't so cluttered up and things like that because her husband uh, was a Buddhist and wants to live a life that doesn't have so much clutter in it. And in fact, I can attest to say that by decluttering your house and getting rid of the things that you don't pay attention to or interact with all the time or necessarily care about is actually a good thing, right? It can seem to lift a weight off of you. But the idea then to turn around and say that the ownership in and of itself is the bad thing, right? That's where I seem to have the biggest problem here. Why is owning anything bad? You see, and this is the crux of the issue and why I started off with that ever-present and completely ridiculous notion from the WEF that you will own nothing and you will be happy. You see, what they're trying to do is they are trying to manipulate classic and honest virtue that people used to live by, not living a cluttered life, you know, living with inside of your means, those things there in order to perpetuate the idea of 
getting rid of your ownership to anything and not taking pride in what you own because ownership makes you bad. It is why it says here reading is precious, but the cult of book ownership can be smug and middle class. The cult of book ownership can be smug and middle class. They released that. They put that out there. And I'm assuming that it wasn't until <clears throat> they actually saw the reaction to this that they went, oh, no, we need to change the title. Right. Now, I went through and I read the article, and it seems that the article has been relatively in touch. If there's something in there that I missed, then I missed something. But I did read it, like I said, twice. And overall, the article substance itself hasn't really changed. Most of it talked about how she's met these sanctimonious a-holes that, again, they want to own books, and they use that to be like, oh, well, you know, I have cats, and I own books, or I drink tea, and I read books, and that elevates me above. We've all met people like that, right? I've met people, well, I read at least this many books a month. It's like, oh, that's great for you. I'm glad that you can do that. And I do somewhat agree with her sentiment here. But using the this is this is where they sneak it in, right? This is where they sneak it in. They hit you with, oh, arrogant a-holes are arrogant. They're bad because of ownership. Don't be bad. Don't own things. This is where they decide to use the duplicitous nature of the arguments and figure out exactly how to twist people into the model of thinking that not owning anything is actually better for you, not having a place to call your own, not, you know, really being able to possess things. Ownership is a bad thing. That's the narrative. It's part of the reason I have such an issue with things like Game Pass. It's part of the reason I have such an issue with places, you know, that let you rent movies or that let you stream movies, right? Although things like that will help you maybe clear out some of your DVD collections. Maybe you don't know those anymore. Ah, it's on Netflix. I'll go watch it over there. Oh, this video game? Well, you know, I don't really need the disc anymore. It's over on Game Pass. Well, hey, I don't need the book. Why don't I go buy the ebook? Why don't I just buy it over there until... They remove it and take it from you. And that hard-earned money that you paid under the guise of owning it, just owning it digitally. It's no different than having it physically in your hands. It's entirely different. And if you read the license agreements, you're actually paying a rental fee. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be one of the biggest fights that we have in modern society and modern culture is the idea of ownership. We're constantly seeing a great fight going on right now with AI artwork and ownership of intellectual properties. We are seeing the constant battle for people out there trying to figure out how they can own the things that they want to enjoy in life or need in life. We've seen these massive massive financial corporations go out and buy entire swaths of housing projects and turn them into rental properties, stripping ownership away from others and at the same time raising the price of houses to a point where it's almost impossible to buy. Okay, this is evil. The idea that you cannot own anything or you are evil is wrong because at the end of the day, somebody will own it. It just won't be you. This article, I would strongly urge all of you to go and read now that you have seen the original title of it. Okay. Again, a lot of things in here I don't disagree with. I got a bunch of books on my wall. I want to get rid of them. That's what she says. You know, I don't read them anymore. I'll get rid of them. Give them to somebody else. Or for the abhorrent ones that she doesn't think that anybody else should have, she puts them in the recycling bin because she has to do her virtuous thing and make sure that evil information doesn't get out into the world, right? That's in there as well. Also talks about the relationship with her husband and the decluttering of things. Again, all of this weaved into, but she doesn't come out and say, but... The attitude of people who do this is wrong, and that's why owning books isn't a bad thing, but acting in a bad way is. No, no, no. It comes down to ownership. Get rid of what you have. Own as little as possible because ownership corrupts you.
So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you think about this down below. I wanted to bring this uh, article to you. I will leave the uh, link in the description so you guys can go read it if you want to. I will also leave the uh, web archive link in the description as well. It's pretty long. Hopefully it'll let me leave it in the description, but I'll leave both of those down there so you guys can go and check it out and see for yourself. And you guys can read this again. Like I said, I read it twice. And again, if something was changed and I missed it, I missed it, you know, then, then, you know, them's just the breaks. That's how it works. But as always, I want to know what you guys think about this topic. So do me the greatest of favors, if you would, and comment down below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Tell me, no, dude, I think you're totally wrong. I read the article and I think you're so off base to drink with crazy. You don't know what you're talking about. Tell me that. And guess what? I dedicate a special live stream to everybody on this channel who comments down below. I call it Sunday Coffee. And it's where we pull up the live stream, we go right in, you guys can see your comments on the screen, and I go through and I read all of your comments every single Sunday at 11 a.m. Central. The reason that I do this is because I figure if you're here, whether you're here to trash on me or whether you're here to actually pay me a compliment, you guys have dedicated time to my channel, and thusly, I should do the least that I can do and dedicate a little bit of time back to you. So I look forward to seeing you all here on Sunday Coffee. And don't forget, if you liked what I did here, hit that like button and subscribe on your way out. And until next time, cheers, everybody. Thank you all for being here on A Drink With Crazy. If you guys never want to miss a notification for the channel, go down in the link in the description and click that button to follow me and support me over on Locals. It's free to join, but that's where you can support me with money if you so choose. Also, don't forget to click those Rumble and Odyssey links so that way we can get over there and keep that growing. And until next time, cheers, everybody.